tungkol sa mga unpaid remittances to BIR, GSIS, PhilHealth, Pag-ibig, and other social and health systems. For the record, Ma Madam Chair, based on DepEd CAR 2023 as of December 31, 2023, DepEd has unremitted taxes and premiums in the following amounts. So due to BIR withholding taxes, uh, one uh, 1,306,199,728.37. Sa GSIS naman po, 3,100,914,964. Mahalaga po itong GSIS dahil po pag na late ang remittance ng premium loan sa GSIS, ang tatamaan po ng mga interest ay ang mga teachers o ang mga non-teaching personnel. It's reality that more than half of learners in grades 6 10 and 12 have failed to achieve the ideal proficiency levels. Hindi ko po alam kung paano nyo i-realize ito concerning the possible significant changes already with the specs. The subsidy of the uh, boy scouting and girl scouting, we have to restore them as we, all of us, we're into scouting girls and boys. To facilitate <sighs> an e-learning system having one computer for 30 teachers. And I believe, Madam Chair, that this validates the reason why the DepEd in 2023 requested and lobbied for an allocation amounting to 11 billion, 361 million. Ma'am, for the... Uh, student ratio, currently we are uh, one computer per... Uh, if I may interrupt, we are yes, asking for the year 2023, sir, so we can uh, relate it with the result of the AOM for 2023. Ma'am, for the 2023 fund, ma'am, uh, the computer ratio is one is to nine, meaning one computer, nine students po. That is one is to nine. One, one computer for nine students. Two, yes. How about the ratio for the teachers? Mom, for the teachers. Come on. We're getting the. Uh, Mom, the grand total, dito po yung region, is one computer is for uh, 30 teachers. One computer for 30 teachers. 30.57. That is almost saying impossible to facilitate <clears throat> an e-learning system having one computer for 30 teachers. And I believe, Madam Chair, that this validates the reason why the DepEd in 2023 requested and lobbied for an allocation amounting to 11 billion. 361 million. In other words, sinuportahan po tayo ng Senado at ng Kongreso in addressing this need, in addressing this gap. However, if I may request the Secretary to flash the next slide. If I may invite your attention to the current appropriations. Ito po yung appropriation for 2023. The amount is 11 billion 361 million. However, ang naging utilization po niya is only 19.22%. That is equivalent by way of obligation to 2 billion 183 million and disbursement to 2 million billion 75 million. So, bakit po sa tindi ng pangangailangan natin for ICT packages? Madam Chair, out of 11 billion allocation, bakit po 2 billion 75 million lang ang naging disbursement? Can we hear from DepEd? Please answer the question. Uh, may we direct the... Uh... 
Director Pitagan okay. to answer, please. Thank you very much, sir. Ma'am, for the 2023, when the new administration came in, the priority was the continuing 2022. That's why for 2022 funds, we have the 92% uh, obligation. Now, yung 2023, ma'am, tumawid ngayon siya na 2024. So right Madam now... Madam Chair, if I may interrupt, okay. parang ang hirap pong i-appreciate nung naging explanation nyo na ang priority nyo is continuing, which is the budget from 2022. Why therefore did you request for 11 billion for 2023? Yeah. Kung sasabihin nyo ngayon, ang priority nyo is 2022, kaya hindi nyo nagamit yung 2023. Alam po ninyo, uh, Mr. Resource Speaker, dun po sa amin sa Batangas, hindi po magkamayaw ang humihingi ng tulong na estudyante, teacher, and even PTA officers, lahat ang problema nila, computer, laptop. Now, we have this 11 billion budget. You requested this for 2023. Bakit po ang disbursement nyo, 2 billion lang? Yun, ma'am. To answer the question po, uh, in May 2024, nabili na po natin yung 2023 budget, ang pending po natin, 95% na yung uh, ating obligation. Kaya lang po hindi po nagre-reflect is because we are asking for the modification of the expense class from capital outlay to MOOE. Madam Chair? Yun po bang May 2024 na sinasabi nyo? Does this pertain to the 2 billion disbursement? Uh, hindi ma'am. This is this pertains to the nine, the 8 billion more na hindi pa na gagamit. So nasaan po yung 8 billion? Ma'am yun, nagamit na po natin to. Where are the computer sets now? The computers now are being delivered to the schools. Yung pong, at yung pong hinahanap nyo na 20... Who can validate that information that they are being delivered to schools? Because as far as I know, napakatindi po ng pangangailangan for computers ng ating mga public schools. If I may continue, Madam Chair, he made mention about the continuing appropriation. So let me invite your attention to color blue of the slide. Ayan po yung continuing appropriation. We have 9 billion budget. Tama po si Mr. Resource Speaker. May nagamit na 8 billion. But what surprises me a lot, punta po tayo sa baba. Both the current and the continuing has an accomplishment of 0%. Does our Resource Speaker validate this report? Uh, this is as of December 31, 2023. Yes, and if I may add, Madam Chair, uh -uh. pagdating po natin dito sa accomplishment report, I hope the people of Batangas are listening to me. Para hindi na nila kulitin kung nasan ito mga computer. We're talking about 2,349 LC, 2,648 smart TVs, 12,022 laptops, 7,558 laptops. That is for current appropriation. And for continuing appropriation, Madam Chair, ang hindi po na di deliver 6,770 packages. And the breakdown is 4,067 LC, 337 smart TVs and 2,366 laptops mm -hmm. with 3,161 laptops mm -hmm. for non-teaching personnel. This is as of December 31, 2023. Nasaan po itong mga equipments na ito? Uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor, yung pong pinabagit nyo na 4,067 laptops, na-deliver na po natin ang 91.47%. Yung pong sinabanggit nyo na 337 packages ng smart TVs, na-deliver na po natin ang 91.6%.
Doon po sa laptop for teaching na 2,366 packages, 100% na po na na-deliver natin to para sa mga teachers. At yung pong laptops for non-teaching, na-deliver na rin po ito ng 100%. These are all accounted for the fund year of 2022. May we request the resource speaker to submit to us the documents proving all the delivery. Yes, ma'am. And can we go, Mr. Resource Speaker, to mm -hmm. the current appropriation? Mm -hmm. Nasaan po itong 17,019 packages under the current appropriation? Okay. Um, under the current uh, appropriation for the e-learning carts, that's 1,655 uh, uh, packages. Uh, medyo mababa pa po yung ating delivery dito, which is 3.44 uh, delivery. Because the contract, ma'am, the NTP was May to December. So on target po before the end of the year, may bigay po yung lahat ng ELC. Sa STV naman, ma'am, it's the same. For 5,942 packages, it's 3.77% na po yung na-deliver. If I may interrupt, okay. Madam Chair, in other words, the average percentage with respect to the delivery is 3%. Yes, ma'am. Out of the total number of packages. Yes, ma'am. Uh, because the procurement of the Uh, current 2024 happened in January. Madam Chair, I hope that the DepEd, Mr. Resource Speaker, realizes mm -hmm. that the specification when we talk about ICT mm -hmm. changed so fast. Mm -hmm. Hindi ko po alam kung paano nyo i -re realize ito. Mm -hmm. Concerning the possible significant changes already with the specs mm -hmm. of the ICT packages for which the current appropriation is originally mm -hmm. allocated. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that uh, very good observation. Ma'am, all our packages from e-learning card to STV, laptop for teachers and laptop for non-teaching are duly vetted and cleared from the Department of Information, Communication, and Technology. So, nagsasubmit po kami sa kanila ng tech specs, including that of the 2023, and uh, they gave us the corresponding clearance. What causes the delay? Ma'am, yung... Or yung, should I say, who causes the delay? Ma'am, hindi na... Ma'am, kasi, yun nga pong 2024, yung current fund. Siyempre po, nagsimula po kami ng procurement ng January. So, no, this is 2023 budget. Ah, the 2023 budget. Manila. Current appropriation pertains to 2023 current appropriation. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, yun nga po, if I may backtrack a bit, kasi po noong 2023, when we first came in, yung new breed of leaders, hindi pa po nagagalaw yung 2022. So, naging priority po muna yon noong... 2023. I will go back to my question, mm -hmm. Madam Chair. If your priority is 2022, mm -hmm. then you should not have requested for 2023. Kanina po may nabanggit mm -hmm. na nasa warehouse. Ano po ba yung nasa warehouse? Ma'am, yung nasa warehouses na nabanggit, these are not these uh, lots. Ito pong DepEd computerization program na ito, ito po yung recalibrated uh, DCP. Yung pong nasa warehouse, those are those purchased during 2020-2021. Ito pong 2022, ito yung 2023, ito po yung dinideliver pa lang ngayong 2024. Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, I just wish to manifest my frustration about the significant delay in the proper bidding, procurement, and delivery of all these ICT equipments. Ito po ay kailangan-kailangan ng ating mga public schools. As a matter of fact, I wish to believe na ito po ang dahilan kung bakit ang Philippine education ay nasa bottom ng ranking ng PISA. Mayroon naman po tayong budget. Why don't we act promptly? So we address this problem in the Department of Education. Yes, Thank you very much, Your Honor, for that 
observation validating the need of technology for schools. Ma'am, kaya po ngayon, doon po sa hinihingi namin na 2025, we have started already the early procurement activities. Para po ngayon this year, uh, meron na pong NEP level, sinimulan na po namin yung EPA activities para nga pagdating ng 2025, Ma ma ka Madam Chair, I wish to go back to my question. What caused the delay in the procurement for 2023? Because I do not consider as a valid excuse the priority nyo at 2022. Please give me a valid reason. Well, yung some of the reasons na nilagay din po namin. Number one, we have to, well, since bago yung leadership, we have to recalibrate. Kasi ma'am, dati e-classroom, Sean, So we have to really do an extensive onboarding of all the strands, all the people on the ground. Ano ba talaga yung kailangan? Magbibigay ba tayo ng computer laboratory? And a whole other... Ibig sabihin, Mr. Resource Speaker, while you are doing all this procurement, you have not made up your mind as to the specification of the ICT that you are procuring. That is a manifestation, Madam Chair. I acknowledge that my time ended already. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much, Representative Luistro. Since there are no other members from the minority uh, who wish to ask questions, let's proceed to the rest of the members of the majority for the interpolation. Next to us question is our Representative Migs Nograles. Not around. Uh, the Chair now recognizes uh, Vice Chairperson Representative Zia Alonto Adjong. Thank you, Madam Chair. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Uh, magandang umaga po sa ating DepEd family. Uh, let me just uh, associate myself, uh, Madam Chair, to the opening remarks of our sponsor when she describes our current weather status with the entry of our secretary, Sani Angara. Well, it makes the Beatles song a little bit relevant today. Uh, and uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, uh, I was listening to the manifestation of uh, our good friend and uh, veteran legislator from Cagayan de Oro City, Congressman Rufus Rodriguez, uh, when he also mentioned about one of my favorite Western philosophers, uh, the father of modern philosophy, Rene Descartes. Ergo, I think. Therefore, I'm, the reason why I'm saying this, Madam Chair, because it has, though Descartes is a uh, Protestant, but it has a uh, religious symbolism to that statement. Kujito uh, Ergusum. As our secretary would know, the first uh, surah chapter in the Quran, which was revealed to our Prophet Muhammad wasalam, was Suratul Alak. In English, it means daybreak or dawn. So it represents the emergence uh, of, the, of the wisdom and the knowledge that the person needs to acquire. And uh, the first line that was revealed to our prophet was ikra in arabic ikra it means read read and the succeeding lines read in the name of thy lord who created man from a single clot of blood who teaches man what he knows not so uh in response to congressman rufus manifestation earlier the reason why we it is innate for every one of us to seek knowledge is because we are trying to get closer to the source of knowledge which is god so uh i'd just like to ask question i don't know which of the undersecretaries would like to would i be directing this question because uh, i came from a muslim community a minority muslim community sometimes these communities are outside of you know outside of the reach of the central uh, uh, central uh, central uh, offices in, in the in this case deped so i'm more particular about how the deped would really push on to in, include to in, include all the marginalized communities especially those who are in the far flung areas and those especially communities that have been affected by either man made or uh, natural calamities so i'm more interested in the program yung tinatawag po nating last mile schools program uh, madam chair so uh, before i ask the question to whichever is uh, appropriate under secretaries to help me understand further uh, enlighten me as to the status of this program i'd just like to ask uh, secretary angara uh, i was reading in a news article that came out today this morning and uh, you were quoted actually madam 
Madam Chair, uh, Secretary Angara, uh, about your recommendation to review and reassess the processes in terms of, I guess, the procuring of uh, procurement processes and to reevaluate the existing uh, I don't know, uh, policies of your department. May I ask, Madam Chair, uh, if uh, Secretary Angana partic Angara particularly refers to the, the last mile schools program and why does he order for the rec why does he recommend the reevaluation and review of the existing uh, procurement uh, policies of his department? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Kong Adyong. Uh, salamat po uh, for your very optimistic words and uh, salam alaikum. Salam. Uh, we, we, uh, you're correct, uh, Your Honor, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, that is one of the concerns because dito sa last mile schools, the experience on the ground is uh, parang nagugulat yung nagbibid, nagbibid siya ng mababa, tapos nakikita niya napakalayo pala nung lugar. Mm -hmm. So, madalas inaabandon niya yung project, sa totoo lang. So I think we have to examine our uh, our bidding processes there and ensure that uh, there is enough uh, room for the associated costs, the logistics of uh, building these classrooms. Uh, and itong last mile schools, of course, uh, itong nga yung uh, in geographically disadvantaged, isolated and disadvantaged areas or GIDA areas. And uh, there is a budget in the uh, 2025 proposed budget for of for 10 billion, covering 154 school sites but more generally uh, regarding procurement i was i really noticed that mabagal ho kami sa procurement okay. uh, i think uh, if you notice for 2024 the books are not arriving on time your honor uh, we're only starting to deliver books now and the kids are already in school uh, the completion of the books will be done by december ho, your honor so hindi na po pwede. i think we can borrow practices from some other agencies of government would do nabanggit po yung epa or yung early procurement activities it is applicable not only to infrastructure because uh, uh, infra the infrastructure to, to build a classroom is more difficult than building a, ro a road uh, your honor because uh, you have to assess the condition of the soil you have to validate the school site you have to check that there is a school title among others among many other things you have to check that if you're building a five-story school building that the structure can be supported by the by the geographical conditions, Your Honor. These are but some of the things we have to do, unlike when we uh, put something for a road. So I've, I've conveyed this to the leadership of the House, and I think that's why they're asking for your lists quite early. And we're very appreciative of this uh, proactive uh, action on the part of the chair, the vice chair, our budget sponsor, our senior vice chair. Because uh, working together, we can really accelerate the pace. Because if we do a status quo type of uh, action, wala hu mangyayari sa atin, uh, Your Honor. We need really to uh, work in tandem, uh, work uh, multitask, meaning we're debating the budget, but at the same time, we're also doing the executive or administrative activities like early procurement activities for books, uh, for infrastructure, for computers, uh, doing things like market scoping, uh, discussion with, uh, with the pr prospective bidders, um, short of award, Your Honor, because uh, clearly that, that is not, that's, that's what the DPWH does in many of its infrastructure projects, I understand. Uh, Your Honor. Kaya yun po yung nice nating mangyari. And then lastly, uh, dun sa reading ho, uh, unfortunately we're not a reading culture, Your Honor, but I suspect everyone in this room has benefited somehow from reading. Meaning our parents read to us, our teachers read to us, and we learned reading at a young age. And we imbibed it and we read on our own so that we progressed in life, Your Honor. So it, the, the study showed that the, the countries who do the best in PISA exams are those where there's a reading culture and the parents read to their children. That's why they check, bakit sa ibang bansa, active naman ang parents sa Parent Teachers Association, nanonood po sila ng soccer game, ng basketball game, nagpapakain naman sila. Pero hindi yun ang effective interventions po. Yung effective intervention, yung basahan natin ang ating mga anak. For, for teachers, for parents, for communities, we really need to work together to encourage a reading culture in our country. That is the future, uh, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Secretary Ngara. Now, uh, you mentioned about the, the low, slow and delay process in the bidding process. No, is it is it safe to assume, uh, Madam Chair, Secretary, that in the in the previous, no, itong sinabi mong ire-recommend for evaluation. What is the 
what is the ano, no? How do you proceed with the bidding processes in before you you procure? Is it centralized ang uh, ang bidding niyo, or is it do you also devolve these functions to your regional and city and uh, uh, provincial offices? Because may delay. Ang sabi mo kanina because of the logistics, sometimes it causes delay because you you procure in the central uh, offices. No? Yes, Your Honor, that's a very good question. Uh, decentralized po yung repairs. Uh, of course, construction is on the DPW is for the DPWH. Pero yung mga repairs of classroom nasa, but the beatings, but the nasa regions po yun. The bidding is also the regions, and regional the regions. level, Your Honor. Um, and for uh, furniture, school furniture, that's also at the regional level. Pero yung mga libro, yung mga computers na napag-usapan natin uh, previously is done at the central office. So I think one of the reforms that we can institute is how we can... Uh, uh, do it at the regional level para mas mabilis po. Okay, uh, you, diba, your department is requesting for additional 10 billion pesos to fund the ano, no, LMSP no, program. But let's talk about the challenges that you faced uh, in terms of the slow utilization in the budget. According to your uh, submitted uh, summary of uh, appropriations, allotments, obligation, disbursement, and balances, uh, there was a an amount of 20.52 4 billion pesos only 5 50% 5, 5, of that was was utilized no uh, which amounts to a roughly around 10.29 billion pesos and this is on top madam chair this is on top of the the budget uh, the slow completion of facilities uh, i think the program is aiming to provide for 100 uh, uh, among the 152 sites uh, constructed. There are a number, quite a number of funds that have been reverted. Uh, so I'm asking now, Mr. Uh, Secretary or whoever is in charge of this program, which uh, you, uh, Under Secretary is in charge of the LMS, why is there a slow de a delay of the completion of these projects, number one, prior to the request of the 10 billion, because there's a sizable amount that you have not been utilized but obligated. I'm just asking, Mr. M Madam Chair, what really causes the delay uh, in terms of uh, this, the sites that you have already identified, the completion of these uh, school facilities, and as well as the rever reversion of some of the funds that have already been allotted to you. Number, number three is also the 573, I think 73 have already completed, but out of the 156. Now, this is this program has been going on since 2022, and for the this is now the fourth year of this program, if I may say so. So I'm I'm just wondering, Madam Chair, what really is the challenges that you're facing? Uh, is it because of Sabingani Secretary? Is it because of is it because of the uh, no, uh, logistics? Is it because there seems to be a uh, problem in terms of uh, the liquidated damages that you have to incur against those uh, su suppliers that have that did not fulfill uh, faithfully complied with the with the agreement you have signed uh, i don't know mr secretary yeah. whoever with your, is with your permission yes uh, i have John. so many questions but i have, yes. I have limited time and that's yeah. why i'm trying to compound all these questions all together yes. thank you we appreciate that yes. uh, uh, the holistic approach uh, madam chair if i may turn them over to to use sequencing with your permission, uh, Your Honor, because uh, they were the ones in charge of the uh, last mile schools program under the school infrastructure strand uh, previously. Yeah. Yes. Madam Chair, Your Honor, uh, with respect to the last mile school program, the problematic year for implementation was the 2021, uh, primarily because it was the only time that the procurement of the last mile school was centralized. And there were three contractors that was chosen uh, so when, we, when the infrastructure strand was created, we talked to the three con contractors, giving them a chance to continue. And after they were given a certain deadline, only one of the contractor was able to uh, finish, I think, 95% of what was allotted to it. The other one is around 25 or 30%. The balance, I think they will not be able to build anymore. And the third contractor had zero... Uh, zero output, and this is the contractor which, which was in charge of Mindanao. And we are now in the process of terminating uh, those contractors who really did not uh, comply with their requirements. Those are the facilities, no? Oh, last oh. mile school. Po. Okay. 
Now, what about, Ms. Madam Chair, just to wrap up, no? Kasi kanina po, they were asking about the delay of the, I don't know, the delivery uh, of these uh, computers, no? Sometime, I think I heard the Secretary earlier that there are about how many worth of millions of pesos of computers that are still stockpiled in a certain warehouses and you need to you need to ask uh, assistance from our military just so that they can be delivered to their uh, Going users. Going back to 2020 po. <laughs> yes, 2020. So up to now, no? So, gusto ko lang i compartmentalize ma Madam Chair, if I may, no? Gusto ko lang i There's a problem with the ongoing construction of facilities and there's also a problem of the delivery of uh, this... Uh, Equipments, school equipments. I'm asking, why is the DepEd did not even gain or have not even filed or gained for liquidated damages against these uh, contractors? That's a simple reason. No, uh, apart from already being already have already paid 211 million pesos as mobilization fees. Now I'm just wondering, why are we do spending so much money? For a certain uh, equipments that are that whose suppliers have not faithfully delivered as scheduled based on your contract, bakit bakit ganon na nagka, nagka problema tayo? I think that's that's the thing that you need to uh, that's the thing that you need first to address, no? And then now we are asking for a 10 billion budget for the same program, and yet you have not utilized, you have not properly, you not you did not even file for a complaint against all these uh, earring. Suppliers, sir, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam that is Chair, my last, that just, is my just last wanted manifestation. Just to correct also the question. figures. Uh, sir, ang, uh, the last mile school in 2020, the budget for 2021 for last mile school is 1.5 billion only. 1.5 billion again in 2022 and 23 and 3 billion in 2024. Yeah. Opa, opa. That's for the last mile school. Oh, yeah. So, so for 2022 up to 2024, we've started to uh, devolutionize the the procurement to the division level. So it's much faster. That's why in 2022, 23, and 24, the procurement is faster. But again, there's still, you're right, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Your Honor, that there's still uh, logistical issues because they, when they bid, they found out, they would eventually find out that they would have a hard time delivering the uh, raw materials to the last mile school. Madam Chair, I, I, uh, I, I, with all due respect, no, it's not just the logistic challenge, logistical challenges. You have at least you have at least, um, at the very least, file a complaint for those uh, suppliers who have not fully and faithfully delivered these uh, equipments. No, uh, it's not only a logistical. No, because the more that you delay, it's actually disenfranchisement. Uh, it's a disservice to our students, especially to those who are in need of all these equipments. Remember, Mr. Secretary, I came from a far-flung area. So, kaya nga po mayroong LPL, uh, mayroong climb, uh, mayroong last mile sa schools program tayo because precisely we want to inc to have all all the areas in the Philippines. We are, you know, we are scattered everywhere. We are a archipelagic country. And may mga urban, mga rural areas dyan na kailangan talaga ng, ng quality na services sa ating education. The more that you don't do anything about this, at least man lang have this uh, suppliers answer Legally or what? Whatever. Just complain. Because this is actually a disservice to the people, uh, to, the, to our students in the far flung areas. Madam Chair, quick response. Yes, uh, uh, please wrap you, up. For the 2021, we've already initiated... Now you're asking 10 billion pesos additional. And you have yet, you have yet to, uh, to, uh, to actually utilize the remaining funds. Yeah, Your Honor, we, you did, have we, that, we did not ask for a 10 billion. No, I think the Secretary, if I may heard correctly, that's 10 billion pesos. Uh, 3 billion in the proposed, billion. In the proposed oh, in NEP, the proposed. Your Honor, okay. not in the wish list, but in the in okay. the original agency submission to DBM, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you for that correction, Mr. But let me just finally, you know, let me just say, please Madam Chair. Uh, yes, please, again, uh, very short lang po. Uh, please, under your stewardship, uh, Secretary Nga, I hope that we can see at least a sense of accountability. No, I think it's time. Part of that review uh, that you have recommended, the reevaluation of the processes, the policies. I think the, we we also need to run after those people who have deliberately, deliberately, uh, you know. Pinagano tayo kung parang andun yung deliberate uh, way na talagang niloko tayo. Yes, sir. No? Now, yes. For that, Ms. Madam Chair, that's my final remark. Yes, Your Honor, we will we will go after these people and uh, the suggestion to pay special attention. Tututukan po namin, uh, Mr. Congressman, Congressman Adyong, 
itong programa ng ito dahil ito yung pinaka dapat tinutulungan natin uh, sa educational system ho natin sa ibang bansa kapag uh, dehado ang isang eskwelahan dehado mga bata yun ang binibigyan ng pinakamalaking uh, tulong o pondo eh parang dito sa atin din nangyayari po yun but uh, we will make sure that, that that changes your honor may manakasuhan ba secretary in line with that uh, question uh, I, uh, madam I'm not chair sure, your honor uh, tinetermine natin yung contractor doon sa Mindanao And we will also ask them to be blacklisted. So, minsan ho kasi baka dapat, uh, one thing I'm thinking about, Your Honor, Madam Chair, is baka dapat ilipat na namin sa DPWH just like the, just like the construction of the classrooms. Kasi construction din naman ho ito eh. So I think uh, mas kabisado ho nila yung sino yung mga gumagawa, sino yung mga hindi maasahan. Dahil minsan, kumukuha kami ng contractor pero na-blacklist na pala ng DPWH. So I think the more practical thing is really to to maybe put a special provision that it can be, or maybe if, if it's within the power of the committee to ensure that the implementation along with the construction uh, is with, with your permission. Uh, that's just a suggestion, uh, Your Honors. We will take note of that. Um, the Senior Vice Chair also um, is taking note of that. In line with that question, may we ask the, the department to submit a report on the status of these contractors? Um, Do that, Madam, Madam Chair. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Before we proceed with other interpolators, um, the Chair will declare for a 30-minute lunch break to give ample time for our uh, Deped family and other members also of um, the committee to have...